Uh, we will now begin the first session titled Water Governance in the Mekong River Basin. Our first presenter is Mr. Surian Wichit Lakan, Executive Director of the Mekong Institute. Mr. Wichit Lakan will present on the Mekong Regional Framework, Mutual Recognition of Issues in Sustainable Water Management. Please come up to the stage for your presentation. Excellency Kim and colleagues uh, from Korea and also from uh, Mekong countries. Uh, first and foremost, uh, I would like to express my thanks for inviting me to, show, uh, to share uh, experience and some of the information. I'll be speaking uh, to you this morning, uh, providing uh, a bit of ideas about a number of Mekong uh, sub-regional uh, cooperation framework what are some mutual recognition on uh, sustainable water management. And I hope to also share some of the uh, experience that uh, Meco Institute has been doing uh, with uh, Korea uh, in terms of how water management projects have been implemented and what could be some lessons learned where investment, more research cooperation could be promoted in the future. All right, next please. A little bit of Mekong Institute. Uh, Mekong Institute is, uh, was established uh, since 1996. Uh, we are an intergovernmental organization uh, working in support of the uh, greater Mekong sub-region countries, namely five Mekong and two southern provinces of China. The mandate is for capacity development to support regional cooperation and integration. Without, without looking into much of the background, uh, I would like to emphasize that Mekong sub-region has been uh, a fast-growing sub-region, and you could see that uh, it's been growing in terms of investment, in terms of development of infrastructure, in terms of trade, transport, logistics. Even during the pandemic time, we also ha we have seen the growing importance of domestic market. And that would mean that uh, the uh, level of development in, in the sub-region has been growing a lot. The region, uh, the sub-region is also an important connecting piece of ASEAN and the rest of Asia. And it also turned out to be one of the uh, fast-growing uh, production uh, sub-region uh, that connect to the rest of the world, uh, be it on uh, food, be it on uh, other industry, and, and so on. I think the recent uh, US-China uh, trade uh, conflict, also uh, we have seen a shift in investment of uh, many big investors to countries like Vietnam and so on and so forth. And that would mean uh, Mekong sub-region is a growing sub-region. At the same time, the region is also facing a lot of challenges. Uh, part of it is because of uh, a lot of development. There are unintended consequences. The issues of water remain to be uh, one of the fundamental core uh, agenda of the region, not because of the Mekong in the river, uh, Mekong River, but also the use of Mekong and the multiple multifunctionality of water in our daily life and also supporting economic uh, development. We are having a lot of uh, a number of uh, Mekong Corporation framework. I'll come back to that in terms of uh, how many of them and what are the focus. But across the framework, what we have seen is that uh, much of the agenda of the corporation always be in the three area. One is on connectivity, where uh, I think the earlier speaker already mentioned about infrastructure development, uh, digital uh, infrastructure, and you can name all the infrastructure that connect uh, countries uh, in Mekong sub-region together. The second area is relating to competitiveness, where we look into how we can cut costs in moving goods, people from the countries, looking into how we can uh, facilitate investment, how we can make sure that cross-border procedures becoming more effective, how we can enhance capacity of SME and the like. This is to ensure that uh, the uh, productivity is there and we will be able to compete in international market. Last area is about community uh, concept. Uh, this is about public health, 
this is about water, this is about natural resources, forests, and uh, also a number of uh, uh, in inclusive, uh, social inclusive development. What I would like to emphasize here is that many cases, these reach sub-regional cooperation framework label water as part of community. When water is labeled as part of one specific cooperation area, this is basically downgrade the importance of water. I recall Excellency uh, Kim during his uh, opening remarks that uh, water is life. And, and, and to me, when you look into this co uh, connectivity, competitiveness, and community, you certainly can see the role of water in many aspects. Water also serves the basis to support production. Water also provides means of livelihoods of the people. So water here, therefore, should not be seen as a topic or as a sector, but rather into an integral element, into national development, rural community development, and also sub-regional, even international cooperation. So that's something I would like to emphasize. Next, please. Well, uh, I'm sure that you have heard uh, that in Mekong sub-region, we have a number of cooperation framework. Mekong Institute conducted a study in 2020, and we have learned that there are 14 Mekong-related cooperation frameworks, and that was 2020. This year, 2022, there are more added to it. Uh, for example, uh, the Mekong-Australia partnership now becoming active with the uh, small unit established at the Australian Embassy in Bangkok. There are also bilateral countries who are putting a lot of interest and now forming a, a small strategy for Mekong, such as UK, such as uh, New Zealand, such as um, some sort of East, uh, country like Israel. What I would like just to emphasize here is that this cooperation framework, which is a lot, and I think uh, over the next few years it could reach 20 framework provide a lot of opportunity in terms of addressing priority needs of the Mekong countries, in terms of bringing comparative advantage, in terms of technology, in terms of investment, in terms of uh, process of development. But as is, at the same time, it also brings complexity in terms of uh, different approaches, in terms of ideas, in terms of fine-tuning how focal area and uh, investment will be translated into implementation on the ground. Many cases, uh, these are implemented in good synergy, but uh, many cases also in completely uh, diverge. Of course, this remains also one of the areas that Mekong countries see as a, the important uh, uh, area where we could seek synergy and promote complementarity. I would like just to walk through briefly, just to get a glimpse of uh, what we have on the screen. Of course, uh, Mekong River Commission, they already implement basin development strategy. Of course, among the water-related agencies, but oftentimes there are issues related to economic sector in the use of water, um, and how the industry and private sector should collaborate in implementing this uh, Mekong development strategy. Some of the important ones, such as Greater Mekong uh, Sub-Region Program, formerly called Economic Cooperation Program, promoted by ADB, they are uh, implementing a long-term strategic framework, 2030, and this uh, will provide one of the important framework in terms of promoting investment incubation concept and provide a regional investment framework, developing regional economic corridors, GMS cities, GMS city network, so that we can advance this uh, so-called uh, regional sub-regional community uh, in the future. Uh, what else I can share a few words? Uh, initiative for ASEAN integration, particularly looking at how we can narrow the, uh, narrowing development gaps among uh, COMV countries, and uh, this, uh, they have recently this year announced that they will become an advanced global business hub by 2030. So that would also mean that CLMV also looking into upgrading their uh, infrastructure, uh, also investment, and also in terms of competitiveness. What, what else I could provide? ACMEC. 
it, which, is, uh, which has been developed for a number of years. Uh, they decided, I think it is in the making, but those who are following ACMEC uh, development, you would know that next year they will com complete the five-year master plan and the new master plan will be developed to support that uh, ACMEC uh, summit will be held early next year to announce the uh, establishment of ACMEC interim secretariat. This is now uh, a time that ACMEC would take a very proactive role in advancing the cooperation for the so-called homegrown Mekong Country Initiative, ACMEC. Mekong Korea would be something that I think uh, Excellency Kim uh, mentioned a while ago. I particularly interested in the announcement of the President uh, of Republic of Korea in the recent summit. One of the uh, uh, cooperation tools is the establishment of Mekong Korea Cooperation Funds. Uh, Mekong City has been uh, fortunate enough to be the administrator of the funds. This year we have five million US dollars uh, that support the research and projects in the Mekong countries. But the President of Republic of Korea announced that this will be increased to 10 million US dollars by 2027. This raises also the uh, importance of the Mekong sub-region to Korea and also commitment of Republic of Korea. We still need to look into how we can really prepare for implementing such a, a big uh, cooperation fund. Perhaps I would like just to uh, mention about uh, Lan Chang Meko Corporation because they also play an important role. For those who are following uh, the development uh, end of this year, they will announce the next five-year strategy, which is uh, connecting Lan Chang Meko Corporation area with Belt Road Initiative. Surely this has a lot to dig into. I myself haven't got hold of the document just yet to read to understand what it means in terms of development direction. So in short here, what I would like to emphasize is that it's not only the number, but it's also the dynamic of each of the cooperation framework and how Mekong development agenda will be set and put into implementation. I hope that we can look into this, keeping in mind and see how we can promote synergy, complementarity, and also avoid unintended consequences. Just a brief information before moving on. Uh, Mekong Institute has been uh, also privileged to support a number of cooperation frameworks, such as we have collaborative project with Mekong uh, River Commission Secretariat on Water and Energy and Food, Nexus. This is also kindly supported by the Republic of Korea. We, we work in support of uh, GMS program. Uh, now, uh, we have just this year, we were announced to be the regional coordinator of this GMS think tank, so linking knowledge and policy. We also support the ASEAN Secretariat in developing CLMV framework for development implementation plan about becoming uh, advanced global business hub. We work in support of uh, ACMEC. Um, I think uh, just a soft announcement now, waiting for the summit to announce next year. Uh, will be announced as the uh, backstopping office of the ACMEC Interim Secretariat. So Mekong Institute will play a role there. Uh, we are administrator of Mekong Korea Corporation Funds. Those are some of the uh, features and also contribution Mekong Institute has been playing. Next, please. This is here in this two minutes. Yes, so I'll try to be very brief. Uh, across this cooperation framework, you will see a number of intensity. So I will not uh, uh, provide it uh, uh, in detail, but I would like just to say that each of cooperation framework brings some comparative advantage. And if you have got time, uh, for example, like Mexico Institute, we really have to follow the development of this framework. There's a lot to explore and uh, synergy to be built and how we can ensure that commitment of the Mekong countries, because regardless of cooperation framework, when working with Mekong countries, is always go to the same ministry. How we can build that synergies and complementarity. Next, please. There's a lot of message I want to provide, but I would like just to emphasize the point I said earlier, that oftentimes water is seen as a topic or as a sector. 
But I would like just, I have been advocating that water should not be labeled as a sect sector, but rather as an integral part of various development area so that we can see more opportunity, we can see it's important, and we can see how water issues should be addressed in a wider uh, scale. Next, please. A little bit of grims of some of the example of uh, uh, initiative in the region relating to water, one of which is Mekong Korea Corporation funds. There are seven priority area. Water is uh, included under the environment, and we have been uh, uh, fortunate enough to work with a number of partners, including K Water and so on and so forth. It is important to recognize that addressing the water issue also requires a simulated experience, investment incubation concept. We cannot go directly to investment and hopefully, hopefully think that things will work on the ground. So some sort of confident building, ensuring the data sharing protocol is working across agency is important. Therefore, some sort of investment incubation or partnership platform is important. Next, please. This is another example of uh, uh, the work that we uh, received uh, support from uh, Republic of Korea that is on water energy, on energy and food nexus, while promoting nexus concept, managing trade-off. We also look into how technology could offer solution uh, in issues such as seawater intrusion in terms of um, many other issues. So I just want just to emphasize that it is important that that we should have some sort of uh, investment incubation program to really create confidence and also addressing implementation issues. Next, please. So this is my last slide, and I would like just to uh, close, uh, conclude my remarks by saying that across cooperation framework, uh, we certainly would need to look into uh, cross cooperation um, uh, framework uh, synergies. I've been advocating the need to promote convergence among these three areas, regardless of cooperation framework, regardless of the area you are working on. One is that how we can promote a green and a resilient economy, because economic development can never take it for granted that res natural resources, water will be there to support without properly addressing the need for better water, good water, you will no longer have a long-term uh, uh, support uh, of the water uh, for the ec economic development. Next is, to what extent we can maintain functionality of Mekong River and all the uh, water systems? And water systems doesn't only mean in the main river, but in any, any uh, context and uh, geography, even in the cities. Now, uh, water becoming uh, main issues, whether too much, too less, so we need to look into how we can maintain functionality and its ecosystem services. Last but not the least is also how we can jointly promote uh, the adaptation to changes such as uh, climate change and, and so on and so forth. Synergy of the cooperation framework has been mentioned. I hope I have time to really mention a little bit of uh, policy enabling framework, but in interest of time, I'll be glad to share specific experience, particularly the core benefit. Water should not be seen as something that you address in isolation. Many cases, we can combine the multiple water benefit. For example, when we create park, park could be also for recreational uh, purposes, but at the same time, park could be the water buffer zone. Certain road systems, multi-layer road system, could be also to support traffic, but it also could serve as a waterway during flooding season. These are some of the examples. I hope I have time to, to dwell into some of the examples. Last but not the least, in order to ensure the effective investment and development on the ground, there's not only in terms of policy, but we need to look into implementation issues. We need to look into confident building. We need to look into inter-agency collaboration, multi-stakeholder engagement. Therefore, capacity development to create this kind of platform as an investment incubation. We ensure that we step from policy concretely on the ground so that we can see the uh, expected result. So I stop there. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Richard Lacan, for your presentation. The second presenter is Dr. Pat Sang Yong, Director at the Korea Mekong Water Resources Management Collaborative Research Center. 
Dr. Park will present on the platform for the Korea-Mekong cooperation in the water sector. Please give him a big round of applause. Yeah, 감사합니다. 우선 uh, 이런 좋은 기회 초대를 해주신 하나 아세안 센터에 대해 감사의 말씀을 드립니다. Uh, good morning, everyone. It's very honor to me have a presentation regarding to those Korea and Mekong collaboration and also in the water sector collaboration. Uh, this morning, I would like to give a short introduction about the basis about Korea Mekong Water Resources Management Collaboration Research Center and also briefing those collaboration with Korea and Mekong region. I think the topic is uh, partially uh, overlapped with Mr. Shuijian's presentation, but um, I'll give you some graphical <laughs> representation on that. And also recently, uh, we have a uh, uh, Korea Mekong International Water Forum in Korea. It was very successful event. We wanted to regain those momentum of collaboration between Korea and Mekong region country, especially in water sectors. So many <clears throat> high level delegation attended and many uh, private sectors and government, government officials. So we shared our vision, how we increase our collaboration in water, especially for the Mekong region. So as, as we are aware about the importantness of geopolitical significance of the Mekong River Basin, I understand from the beginning, the keynote speech and Dr. Surian's speech, we are aware the Mekong region is a hot spot in terms of geopolitical significance and importantness. So uh, this morning we are here to share our shared vision and discuss about how we collaborate to improve the current situation and reduce the gap in the Mekong. So I would like to focus on the water sector collaboration further. Okay, here is some graphical representation of those governance organization and governance system in the Mekong region. Mekong region. Back to 1992, there was a GMS, Greater Mekong Subregion, which is supported by ADB, and after that, the MRC 1995 and Mekong institution in here 1996. Uh, and also the Mekong US partnership was initiated in the year 2009. But in terms of Korean, uh, we started to collaborate with Mekong region in the year 2011. And after that, the Ranchang Mekong cooperation was initiated. So there are a couple of key organizations there the Greater Mekong Sub Region. Uh, economic cooperation program supported by the ADB, they, they promote the implementation of high priority project in the Six Nations. And also Mekong Labor Commission, they promoting the regional dialogue and cooperation between the low Mekong countries. And recently China established a Lanchang Mekong Cooperate in the year 2015. And also United States, established the Law Mekong Initiative, LMI, back to year 2009. And it changed its name into Mekong U.S. Partnerships and back to year 2020. The United States aimed to increase their support and autonomy, economics, independence, and good governance, sustainable growth of the Mekong countries. When you look at into the, those members' countries as the governor, you can see very clearly in this diagram this overall, except China, there are, there are 10 countries of ASEAN. Uh, for the GMS and RMC and MI, those five and six countries involved in this initiative. And for the, uh, for the MRC, only the four, the lower Mekong countries involved in that. And also, there are many, many governance organizations here, as my, our a former speaker in, uh, said about that there are some overlapping areas and how do you find some synergies so, and the, where, where, where would be the collaborative you know, point in there. So in terms of Korea, the ROK Mekong cooperation initiated back to year 2011, it was started as a foreign minister's meeting. But after that, the Mekong Korea Collaboration Fund, MKCF, and what was established back to year 2012. And also there was the ROK Mekong Flannable Action was adopted at the first Mekong 
Korea uh, foreign ministers meeting. And also, the Mr. Shura mentioned the Mekong, Mekong Korea collaboration fund has been increased back to year 2020, it was increased to 6.6, .6, but um, today we had a new message from the Korea, it will be increased to the you know, 10 million year 2027. And also back to year 2019, there was a Korea Mekong summit was held in Busan. So during, uh, during the summit and also as a result of the Korea Mekong summit, the Mekong Han River Declaration was adopted and the establishment of the Mekong ROK Water Resources Joint Resource Center was declared. So that is why K Water and Korea Mekong Center are here, and that is why we wanted to regain those attitudes and those magnitude of collaboration with Mekong countries, you know, back to the COVID era. And Korea Mekong Center, our vision is to to become a global leading platform center for water sector in Mekong region. And so, and we wanted to integrate it, collaborate it, platform for water sector in the Mekong region. So at the moment, we have a better partnership for including the government and also domestic organization and also uh, international organization. We are very active now. And I would like to share the, the ongoing couple of project. Uh, we involved in Vietnam, the smart city development project, which is supported by Korean Ministry of Land and Infrastructure and Transportation. We also, we, we provide technical support to the Indonesian new capital city movement. And with the Minister of Environment, we carried out the World Industrial Mekong Basin. And also, we recently finished uh, the collaboration project with the Mekong Korea Collaboration Fund, which is uh, a half million from the Mekong Korean Collaboration Fund. They are half million from the uh, U.S. State Department. Uh, we provide training to the Mekong region government officer to how to efficiently extract those water-related data uh, based on remote sensing and GIS information. And also, uh, we working on the Cambodia and Laos to, to provide integrated water resources management master plan, uh, working with the UNDP, that, that one is a three years project. And also another project for the Cambodia, which is supported by COICA, the master plan of ITA RRM for the Mekong Delta region in Cambodia. And also uh, we, Korea Mekong Center, we located at the headquarter of the K Water, so we involved in COFRUB a project outside of the Mekong and Asian regions, such as uh, such as Solomon Island project and also the Indonesian project. Since we established back to year 2019, we have expanded our network and we got involved with various water-related projects. So we wanted to uh, well, we wanted to regain our collaborative you know attitude and also promote and and share those ongoing activity. So we planned the first Mekong Korea Internal Water Forum, the uh, October 5th at, at the Seoul. So that time, uh, under the main theme of climate resilience through digital water management in the Mekong region, you can see those numbers, uh, the nine countries and 53 organizations and 200 participants were participated in and we shared vision on the development of the Mekong region. Uh, there was a, a high-level dialogue and there are three thematic sessions and also four water project session. I briefly referred the, those results of the, uh, the first Mekong Korea Internet Water Forum. For the high-level dialogue, the Minister of, Minister of Environment of Korea he ensured about those collaboration and capacity building and good green ODA investment toward the Mekong region. And also there was a keynote speech by the CEO of K Water. He stressed on the transboundary labor uh, development and collaboration and that we wanted to share those experience and technology of Korea's water sectors. And, and thankfully there was a attendance of Thailand Prime Minister's Office Minister. 
and he stressed on the, those investment and primary risk and the socioeconomic stability and also the, those investment and collaboration, especially on the food energy security. And also there was a representative from the USAID, he talked about the partnership and development, development partnership and enhancing climate resilience, etc. And also we had a Cambodian delegation, Cambodian Moram, and His Highness Ponsacha, he delivered message on the sustainable development and world to energy food nexus importantness and also transfer, transparency for the development in the shared river basin of the Mekong. And from the Lao side, uh, Lao side, the deputy minister of uh, Monray, he stressed on the capacity building of the, those government officials and also importantness of the data prevention and knowledge transferring. And also we had a delegation from the Vietnam and also Myanmar, uh, those two countries all stress on the water energy food security and nature-based environment protection and also sustainable development and good governance and close collaboration between Mekong regions and also development partners. So at the same time, we invited those development partners around the Mekong, so we wanted to share what is the ongoing project and where, how should we efficiently collaborate each other. So we invited World Bank, USACE, and also Department of Foreign Affairs of Trade of Australia, and USAID, and USFAO, and KWARA. So we shared our ongoing project and we, we exchanged the importance of the Mekong region. And also we, uh, uh, those developed partners who gathered in the first Mekong Korea International Water Forum, we had a very similar experience and very similar direction, especially in the water sector. So I think uh, we already upon that, we continue this collaboration for the features. And then this kind of platform and this kind of a gathering should be go on and there will be the another edition of, of the Mekong Korea Internet Forum in next year. So there was a water project session organized by the different organizations, UNESCO, IWSSM, and ITRA, and also USAID. And also Korea Environment Institution and Mekong Labor Commission also is in there, and KWARA. And also we had a special session focus on the ROK US Collaboration and Technical Forum, which is supported by Mekong Korea Collaboration Fund and also the, the State Department of the United States. And also there was a, a many bilateral meeting between Korean entity, entity, especially KWARA and the Thailand ONWR, Lao PDR Monray and Cambodia Moram and also USACE, so it was a very good opportunity we can share and we, we, we discuss about the future direction of the collaboration. As a, as a leader, this is, this is my last slide, so we summarize those message and those remarks during the first Mekong Korea International Water Forum. At the moment, this one is a call for action format, but um, for the next year, we wanted to develop some declaration to deliver into the bigger era of the World Forum. I understand there is a World Water Forum is planned for in Indonesia, Bali, and also there a UN conference. So you can deliver uh, this message to a bigger platform to gain the momentum and also raise those important needs of the collaboration between development partners and those important needs of the transparent management of transboundary river basin, the Mekong. Thank you. Kamsamida. Thank you, Dr. Park, for your presentation. Uh, the third presenter is from Dr. Chang Soo Hyung, team leader at K Water Research Institute. Dr. Chang will present on the water and climate digital transfer transformation of water resources management. Please give him a big round of applause. Good morning. I'm Dr. Soo Hyung Jang from K Water Research Institute. Today, I would like to introduce the digital twin water management platform being developed as a digital trans transformation of water resources man management in K Water. Basically, the digital water management center in K Water is in charge of developing digital twin platform 
and Kewara Research Institute is in charge of developing core simulators to be used for digital twin platform. This is the, my, the, the, the content of my presentation. I will first uh, briefly introduce the background and the basic concept of digital twin platform. And then I will show the digital twin water resources management platform developed for Samjin River water set as a the pilot project area. Lastly, lastly, I also would like to briefly introduce the water resources management, the, the software series developed by Kwater Research, Research Institutes as a core simulator of the digital twin platform. As you may know, the, in Korea, we have been suffering from the water-related disasters caused by drought and flood. Even the, such the severe drought and extreme flood are occurred more frequently and more uh, severely. Furthermore, the spatial temporal variability of the precipitation patterns are quite diverse over Korea. For example, of this year in 2020, Korea was damaged by the flood and drought at the same time. If you look at the, the figures on the right hand side, as you can see, the northern part of the South Korea was damaged by the extreme the flood, but the southern part of, of South Korea was suffering from a severe drought during the same period. This is actually the, the current situation in South Korea. As such, the climate change leads to complexity and a high level of uncertainty in the water the resources management in Korea. In order to support decision makers quickly and accurately, considering the complexity of water resources management, the nature of the digital transformation in the field of water resources management is substantially increased in South Korea. In general, the digital twin offers at five levels. The simplest model integrates data from the various sources, and the most advanced model is capable of acting the independently. As you can see, that these the levels. The first level is the mirroring. In other words, the actually the, you can replicate the, all the information, the physical information, actually from the actual field, such as the hydraulic structures, dams, rivers, levees, and the river beds. All those information copied to the, some, the, the virtual world. And second level is the, the monitoring and control. And basically, the, this is the, you all know that the, the we can the monitoring the operational sensoring data. You can link together into the, the virtual system. Also, we can partially operate the, by each water resources management field. And the third level is the modeling and simulation. Basically, in my opinion, this is the most important part. And because the, we have to provide the, the correct information for the decision makers. Then these the, are the, the monitoring and simulators, the modeling based simulations, reproduction and analysis data. It can be shown, displayed on the 3D topography. And the level four is the federation. And this is the synchronizing and interacting and linking of the sub digital twin domains by each water resource management field. And level five is the perfect budget, perfect level. Actually, the, you just, we don't need to control and operate by ourselves. Digital twin it itself, it uh, operates in real time, integrated synchronizing of sub digital twin domains. As we know, the digital twin is a synchronizing, synchronizing technology linking between the real world and the virtual world. In the water resources management field, digital twin monitors the meteorological and hydrological observation data in the water set in real time. And simulates various the water resources management issues such as flood, drought, and water quality in advanced in you know, a virtual space and then the displays the simulation result in a 3D topography, and then provide the, the optimal solution to support the decision making. Now, I would like to some introduce the, digital, the twin water the management platform the developed for Samjin River water set. As a target water set, Samjin River water set 
has the drain area of the almost the 5,000 square kilometers with the river length of the 137 the kilometers. This water has the two large dams and a lot of hydro structures. Also, the, this water has had a lot of the water related disasters, even the, in the recently in 2020. Also, it is very complicated to manage the water resources geomorphologically and meteorologically. This is the reason to select this water set to develop uh, digital twin forest. And the major target, the water risk management, is uh, the monitoring in the flood, drought, water quality, and safe safety. First, I would like to show the architecture of the digital twin platform. We developed a web GIS-based digital twin platform using geospatial data, such as orthogonal images and high-resolution digital terrain model. This platform is then connected in real time with various hydrological data for the purpose of forecasting and now casting depending on water resources management field. 3D objects such as bridges are mounted on the platforms through the drone mapping for the reserve bed. A high res resolution digital terrain model is established through the show special data obtained by a multi-beam echo sounder. Then the, the 3D map is basically created by merging the orthographic images and the digital terrain model. The digital flip, the twin platform can be used individually through a personal computer. At the same time, this platform is also displayed on the, the big board providing realistic information to decision makers. And the digital karam. Karam is the, the, actually the old Korean word. You can understand this, or the liver. There is a search function in the, the upper left corner. And we can search and the, the move the 3D map by typing address or the name. And a number of the layers can be loaded on the platform, and we can be selectively loaded the layers. And there is a GIS function, as well as the icons on the use, uh, we used frequently. The, this digital platform menu at the bottom includes the, the six water resources management packages, such as monitoring, flood, and drought. Next, let's take a look at the icon menu. Through the, the Zoom meeting icon, you can observe this TV or the drum video and have a discussion together in real time. And the, the radar menu shows the, if you click the radar menu, then you can see the, the, the rainbow pattern for two hours in the past and the two hours in the future. From the, this radar, we can get further insight about the weather forecasting, and this radar helps us decide the optimal time when we release the water from them in real time. It is also possible to monitor the water level of the dam and the condition of the facilities from the CCTV icon. And this platform provides information on the constraints of the dam operations with the 3D map toward the downstream and such. If you look at the specific area, type it, then you can go there directly. And you can see the, some of the pre previous restrictions and constraints. Even though the, you can see the, the realistic illustrations through the 360, the camera menu while the manipulating the video screen.
And then I would like to let move the dam site and activate the warning station icon. Then you can see the range of the warning signal. And then you can actually the, provide those information to the people. Now I would like to show the, some the, 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 the cyber physical system menu. And, the, his, and actually the, we can see the all together the water level from the dam to all the down to the ocean in real time. In addition, the historical data can be loaded and the river water levels and alarming stage are expressed by the circle, circle line, depending on the, some of the status of the, the, the dangerous levels like that. And we can find the way, which area is more the risky. And the flood menu provide the, the function to simulate the past flood events and identify the flood region and effect. As you can see, the water level is rising and the eventual river flood is occurring. Then we can explore the inundation area and compare with the flood risk map provided by the Ministry of Environment in Korea. It is also feasible to extract the ground the elevation data of the inundation area using the GIS tool. And the, the past flood events are inserted into the drone images so that we could provide further insight for design effective flood prevention project. As I mentioned earlier, the most the important part among the other the distance between the, the levels, this the simula simulators is the most important in my opinion. So, you know, to provide the critical information for decision makers correctly and immediately. Actually, the K-Water Research Institute has the developed our own software series entitled K-Series, you know, to analyze and the evaluate the throughout the water cycle from the, the headwater to river mouth. As you can see, the, we have the, the port, up to now, we developed the 14 softwares. Also, we are improving and integrating functions and linking and individual softwares, you know, to some the manage at the same time. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Zhang, for your presentation. Last but not least, we will have a presentation from Ms. Suida Tanya Wong, Senior Investment Promotion Officer at the Thailand Board of Investment. She will present on opportunities for investment in ensuring sustainable water resource development in Thailand. Please give her a big round of applause. Good morning, Excellency, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Suida from BOI. Today, I will explain about BOI and how we promote the production of water in Thailand. Okay, um, BOI is a government agency that promotes investment by granting tax and non-tax incentive for business engaged in BOI activity list. Furthermore, we operate the OSOS Investment Center to facilitate investors in getting pro uh, uh, useful information uh, especially uh, in connecting with multiple agencies in Thailand, in doing business in Thailand. At OSOS or One Start, One Stop Service Center or Investment Center, uh, we um, help investors, both BOI and non-BOI, in doing business in Thailand. And next is One Stop Service Center for Visa and Work Permit. It's actually at the same floor at OSOS uh, investment center. Uh, over there, BOI staff work together with officers, 
from Immigration, uh, Immigration Center and Ministry of Labor to facilitate investor uh, yeah, for visa and work permit. And nowadays, BOI have online clinic uh, to serve investor for inquiries about getting promotion from BOI. And if you uh, already have subsidiaries in Thailand, you can uh, meet us uh, at BOI office also. Uh, this uh, BOI online clinic, uh, you can uh, uh, connect us uh, via Zoom application or you can come in uh, our office. On the 3rd of November th uh, this month, BOI committee has approved new direction of the uh, investment promotion in Thailand and uh, also improvement in rules and regulations in uh, investment promotion in Thailand. But some rules uh, are effective already, but some rules will, will be effective next year. So I'm going to explain uh, what relates to uh, the production of water in Thailand. From, from uh, last slide, uh, at, uh, it is the present that BOI have eight sections of el uh, activity eligible for promotion. And the production of water is uh, under section seven, which is service and public utilities. Uh, but uh, next year, we will uh, regroup into 10 uh, sections of eligible activities. But public uh, service and public utilities are under section seven and uh, the criteria are the same, but this regroup uh, aim to reflect the new direction of promotion, new industries in Thailand. Uh, at present, BOI categorize activities eligible for promotion into three groups. Uh, these are uh, section eight, group A and group B. Section A is about technology and innovation development. Uh, for Section A, uh, Group A1 to A4 will uh, receive corporate income tax exemption start from three years to eight years. And for B Group, uh, they won't get um, a corporate income tax exemption, but uh, will get uh, uh, exemption on import duty on machineries and raw materials and non-tax. Next year, we will um, has a little bit change. Uh, section eight will be will become a plus group and uh, a one plus group and for uh, and we combine b one and b two into b only so uh, the concept of incentives are quite the same bill i uh, promote the production of water in alignment with a twenty year master plan on water resources management, especially uh, the second strategic issue, that is uh, the achievement of water security in the production sector, and also the fourth strategy issue, that is to develop and increase efficiency of the collective wastewater treatment system by reusing treated wastewater. At present, uh, we promote the production of water and as A3 group, uh, which means you will receive a uh, five-year corporate income tax exemption, exemption on uh, import duties on machinery and non-tax incentive. But, but next year, we will add up more incentive into the project that produce water from wastewater. So we will consider the source of water as well and add up more uh, incentive but uh, your project must prove that uh, you have wastewater treatment process in the project by uh, obtaining license. Uh, it's, it's called uh, number 101 factory license, which is central waste treatment license from Department of Industrial Works. So uh, you will receive more incentive if you uh, have that license also. If you locate in our targeted areas, you will receive more incentive. Uh, in Mekong region, uh, most of uh, our provinces are in 20 provinces with lowest per capita income. So uh, if your production locates in these uh, 20 provinces, you will uh, receive more incentive uh, 
at least a uh, five-year corporate income tax exemption more add up to your uh, activity for A3 because A3, you will get a five-year corporate income tax exemption. But uh, if your activity is under Group A2, uh, which, which receive eight-year corporate income tax exemption, you will receive a plus 50% reduction corporate income tax rate for five years. Uh, this slide show what uh, who who BOI take care. BOI will uh, promote the promoted person shall be a company, uh, a foundation or a cooperative, and one company can do many projects and they can be the same or different activities. So you can have um, one factory as A2 and uh, one factory in another side as A3. That's okay if you can separate the machine in the project. And the minimum uh, investment requirement of each promoted activity is one million baht, excluding cost of land and working capital. And we look at the financial credibility. So uh, the debt to equity ratio for a newly established company not, must not exceed three to one. But for the expand projects shall be considered on a case by case basis. And uh, we need purchase agreement on uh, the water production along with uh, BOI application. Uh, and if you can show the source of water as raw material as the project, it will be uh, useful information to us. BOI promote uh, tap water, industrial water, or steam. And uh, we uh, consider what is tap water is by uh, we look at the standard that the production can get. Uh, the standard of tap water, we use Water Works Authority announcement about the standard of tap water. And for industrial water, we look at the uh, main machineries you, that you use in the project. So uh, if you use uh, reverse osmosis together with uh, EDI system, electro uh, deionization system, we assume that you produce industrial water. But they are in, at the same uh, level of incentive. And uh, if you have wastewater treatment service, uh, because it's service, so it's another activity, uh, you will receive uh, uh, A2 as your incentive package. The difference is that uh, if you uh, like uh, upgrade, uh, treat used water to meet the standard, uh, for example, to meet the standard of central waste treatment in an industrial park, uh, you will get uh, you uh, your activity is under uh, wastewater treatment activity in Group A2. Uh, so, in conclusion, uh, if you treat water uh, and use water uh, to uh, meet the uh, tap water standard, you will receive uh, at least A3 at your incentive. But if you can get the license of central waste treatment license uh, from Department of Industrial Works, you will receive A2 as your incentive package. Uh, BOI have many online platforms to serve your investment in Thailand. Uh, and if you decide to invest in Thailand and uh, want to get promoted by BOI, you can submit uh, the application online through our e investment promotion system. And after you get promoted, there are also other platform, online platform to serve your investment. And this is the first page of uh, e investment system. It's like um, register for, for an email, and there are only 10 pages in uh, our application. And uh, if you want to get more for more details, about get the promotion, you can find out in our website. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. Yes, thank you, Ms. Tanya Wong. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Before we start the panel discussion, I would like to remind the audience that we will have a Q&A session after the panel discussion on water governance in the Mekong River Basin. Ms. Kim, the floor is yours. Please give them a big round of applause. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, thank you, MC, for introducing me. Um, my name is Yoon Jin Kim, working for the World Water Council, which is the biggest um, multi-stakeholders multi platform um, in a global scale on water. So um, 
maybe taking this opportunity, if there is any opportunity to talk about our um, activities in the lunchtime or in the break, then it would be really great as well. Because um, I think it will be really closely linked to our further activities, what we are going to discuss here. So um, thank you very much for having me here once again. Um, and it's very meaningful gathering of Mekong riparian states and the ROK. Uh, for this collaboration um, and future direction designing all together um, in Thailand by sharing our policy and technology development status um, under different respective political, economic, and environmental and social status and condition. So today um, our seminar on Goes, uh, um, goes and gives us a great chance, to, uh, though, by having here real experts here who presented their own expertise already uh, with us in the different elements uh, for the balanced and long term development for the Mekong region by our cooperation together. So, hopefully, we could have this chance as the place for pondering and also continuing our designing a realistic sustainable plans and the actions for the water management in a more sustainable way. So maybe um, before we begin our discussion, I would like to remind our objective of today's um, seminar, um, which I could just um, summarize in a very in a brief way. The seminar objective is uh, firstly the sharing the information and the encouragement of the uh, sustainable development in the Me Mekong region by having our more better um, water management and the strengthening the network between different stakeholders, which includes the, all different riparian countries and also the partners outside of the Mekong region, and promoting e ESG, um, which is environment and social and governance basis based um, policy or principles for water management. Um, for our common vision. So if I um, just revisit what we've just heard from their presentations as um, Mr. Brad um, in his keynote speech was very inspiring at, uh, for our further cooperation plans as well by seeing vision um, oriented practical cooperation with the Mekong region. And um, as Mr. Surian uh, from the Mekong Institute um, has presented uh, diverse cooperative sub-regional platforms have been operated in and outside of the Mekong region. So I'm going to come back with uh, how this coexistence could be more valuable in a further way. Um, I would like to invite your insights on that. And also as Mr. Um, Sangyang Park shared with us among various initiative, um, uh, more than a decade efforts of ROK to develop partnership with Mekong region reflects not only political commitments, but also practical opportunities um, such as industrial or R&D projects. So I'm going to ask about the more detailed about their plans, um, how they, they are going to execute those plans in the Mekong region. Dr. Su Young Chang also particularly shared the Korean case of the digitalization of water management, which everyone here might want to um, revisit about the more detailed <laughs> explanation how we are going to apply to the Mekong region because we have very different conditions between Korea and the Mekong riparian countries. And uh, last but not least, um, Mrs. Suida um, yeah, was uh, sharing its very representative case of future-oriented notion of if I may say, circular economy related to this water management. So which is really future-oriented notion uh, that you're representing um, uh, even all different riparian countries in the Mekong region, I guess. So um, why don't we start um, respective questions um, to each of the panelists here, and then I will give a general question at the very end of the discussion. So um, can I start with um, Mr. Brad first? Um, so um, you've been in this field um, and also the region over 10 years, I heard. Is that right? <laughs> yes, yes. Um, yes. Okay, yes. 
Yes, yes. So um, you, you are the expert of this region and the Mekong um, issues, I guess. And um, we have this uh, Mekong and U.S. partnership um, deeply engaged in a different areas of the cooperation um, with quite amount of investment and in the scale of cooperative projects by having a um, also a very good governance model could be suggested by given this whole different cooperative um, items by the U.S. And uh, in this context, what do you think about um, this uh, upgraded strategic um, kind of cooperative notion by the ROK to this region of the Mekong? Because you might have seen different initiatives from different countries from your side, and also U.S. was also in that um, kind of flow of how you're going to cooperate with the Mekong region so far. And you've mentioned about this Indo-Pacific strategy by the, um, not only by the Biden administration, but also before the Trump's administration also had this notion. So um, if I can um, ask about um, this more like geopolitical perspective, um, if you see any different perspectives of this ROK and the Mekon cooperation from your perspective, and well, you also mentioned about this um, like-minded partners, right? So it could be also closely related to, to your um, national strategy. And I also saw this action plan of um, global water security, which has been also included all different partners that you're thinking of. So this regional approach into the Mekong, um, and how do you see this Korean initiative um, with the differentiated value that you're seeing from the U.S. and also from your organization? Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, great, great question. Um, I have been uh, coming in and out of the region for, for work and for pleasure for uh, 20 years or so. My first trip to the region almost 20 years ago was on a Mekong trip from uh, just with a friend's boat on a small boat from Phnom Penh up to Krachi to go see the dolphins and we took a long time and that was my first introduction and I have to say it really was transformative in making me um, understand better uh, the, the cultural significance, the biodiversity significance of the region and how important it is to so many people and the United States has a long um, history positive and negative in the region and strong cultural ties to the to the lower Mekong so I think my take is what I'm always hearing is that the United States is in it for the long haul uh, I've also is a uh, um, uh, Surinan pointed out it's it's really a complex field there's the the Japanese are doing so many interesting things the Australians I'm, I'm talking about just outsiders the European Union um, and in Korea has has had things going on of course for a long time so it's a uh, a complex playing field I know personally what I've struggled with is trying to keep up with who's doing what and make connections and that's why I'm, I'm really grateful for something like this for uh, the ASEAN Korea Center to pull us together and remind us why we're here, who's doing what, how do we connect, and how are we going to partner and interact. We're talking very closely now with the uh, with KMCRC and how we're going to make that a real robust partnership um, under K Water and the Minister of Environment. So, my take is that the United States welcomes uh, the participation and the you know even more engagement from the Republic of Korea. It's we have uh, the United States and Republic of Korea have a long storied history. We are, you know, we've been partners for well over 70 years now, and that's an incredibly strong relationship for, for our government. So, um, and it's nice to work with like-minded governments and, and governments that share our values and, and that want to work and want to make a better and more just world. So, yeah, it's just fantastic to work with ROK, but also I, I think we, what I can tell is uh, Republic of Korea has been here a long time, engaged in a long time, and doing a lot of good work for a long time. And it's not like, I don't think they're new on the scene, but really, you know, like the United States, we're, we're here and we're here for the long haul and we want to partner with, um, with our like-minded partners like ROK. 
Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Brad. Yeah, so um, shared vision and the common kind of um, value that we're sharing is really important to proceed these kind of complex uh, issues to be um, resolved by our cooperation. So that was um, what I wanted to point it out from what you've um, just mentioned. Um, so uh, um, let me um, move to uh, Ms., uh, Mr. Surian. Um, yeah, that was very, um, how can I say, it's more like it's also inspiring and also very fact-based, um, good analysis that we could learn from, I think, all your presentation. So in this diversity and the differences of the coexistence of the cooperative platforms and the initiatives, it seems a little um, like uh, making different initiatives and the action towards same direction altogether. Um, might be very difficult, as we all agree. <laughs> so um, could you please share insights and the opinions, any method or any opinions that you can think of, how different and different thoughts of um, initi initiative um, from the different entities? And sometimes they have a um, different purposes, and they have also more like um, different conditions they are, they are promoting uh, from w with the different methodologies. So what do you think, um, how can we make this common value together? Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Um, perhaps I would like just to cite uh, the discussion we have had mid this year, organized by the uh, Korean Embassy in Bangkok. Mm. That was time that uh, the Korean Embassy invited uh, so-called uh, Mekong countries, uh, representative uh, together with the uh, external partners who are interested in Mekong, uh, US, Australia, Japan, China, India, New Zealand. Okay, uh, first from geopolitical point of view, I think there's, there's been uh, a lot of recognition that any Mekong plus framework will not be so meaningful if Mekong countries themselves are not clear in terms of their priorities, their need, and development direction. So called what is important and good and needed by them. You know? Having said that, I think, uh, I think almost all development partners agree to the fact that we need to help to strengthen its capacity, agenda setting capacity first. And that's why I think uh, a number of partners now are trying to explore ways where they can support ACMEC as a common ground. You know, using ACMEC as a common ground to set priorities, development direction, and so on and so forth. The second point that uh, they discussed at that time was that we do not, we do not want to really come up with single direction. That it, that was not what we mean. Uh, because a multiple cooperation framework is in fact bring a different perspective, bring a different uh, experience. What we need is not agreed on single direction. What we agree is synergy complementarity. So trying to look into how best we can complement each other and how we can ensure that policy and cooperation strategy translated to concrete implementation. This is where all the partners agree to use or leverage that so-called Mekong plus cooperation framework to value add. You know, uh, Mekong US partnership, Mekong uh, Korea cooperation. Particularly Mekong Korea cooperation is not only you support uh, a number of parties that seen as a common interest between Mekong country and Korea, but Korean government also offer uh, cooperation funds. And this is, to me, uh, is a step forward towards how investment could be promoted in a larger scale by using Mekong Korea Corporation Fund as investment incubation funds. Meaning to say that before you create a larger scale, you need to have some sort of a simulation pilot process where we can test, we can learn, and we can explore how interagency multi-stakeholder can work together. Once a small project is successful, then we try just to uh, invite a private sector, industry, and so on and so forth to see how they can scale up. So this way, Mekong Korea Corporation Fund is not acting as a fund disbursement mechanism, but it's a fund that fostering investment incubation. Yeah? This is another layer that 
all the partner agree to work. And Mekong Korea Corporation Fund is, does not only engage Korean agency. You know, like one of the um, water projects uh, we implemented in Vietnam, we also work with NASA, you know, under that uh, MKCF funded project. Last but not the least, I think we want also to engage, share information to private sector in industry about the policy concept. And that's why I think one of the uh, underlying message I'm trying to say is that water management does not only exist within the Mekong River. It's in the cities, it's in rural communities. It's connected with infrastructure development. It's also related to uh, transport. It's related to produ food production and so on and so forth. So that we see investment opportunity and scaling up investment to go much more than just addressing water sector development. So if we see from that angle, you know, there's much more opportunity to explore in terms of using digital technology, in terms of engaging multi-stakeholder, in terms of city development, urbanization, and so on and so forth. Those are some of the directions, despite the complexity of regional uh, cooperation framework, but there's some common direction that we all agree to embark into so that we can complement and promote synergy across framework. Thank you very much. Thank you. So um, it is very obvious uh, from what you just said that we are not um, seeking for the single direction, but um, we are seeking for the synergy and a more comprehensive approach. Um, so it will never be never be um, solved with the silo approaches um, by the sectors and also different stakeholders. So um, yes, that that might be one of our kind of. Um, discussion research at the very end, at the end uh, even. So um, well, I will, I will um, revisit your opinion later again. So um, I'll move to uh, Dr. Sangyang Park. Um, that was very interesting, good initiative that has been done by um, Korean government and also K Water and also the center at this moment. So um, what would you, um, what would you like to um, tell people um, about uh, the distinctive aspect of this Korean initiative um, of cooperation between ROK and the Mekong region from other um, existing uh, institutions or the cooperative initiatives, do you think? Okay, and thanks for the question and thanks for this opportunity to talk about those commitments from the Korean government. Well, actually, the, for the beginning of my presentation, I, I briefly described those ongoing, you know, ongoing governance organization in the Mekong and Low Mekong and entire Mekong and also ASEAN. Well, uh, to respond to your question, what are the distinctive differences of this uh, Korea Mekong centenary here? Well, uh, the, I can say that this Korea Mekong Center is based on those, those commitment of the entire Mekong countries and also Korean government back to year 2019. It is the basis on the, those summit rebel commitment. So I can say we are very strongly supported by entire Mekong countries, the state, uh, state VIP level. So, I think that one is, we, we still pursue that new southern policy. Actually, that one is very strong direction of Korean diplomatics toward the Asia Pacific region, the new southern policy. But um, at the moment, we also uh, develop that concept and to link it with in the Pacific strategy and in the in the Pacific economic frameworks and something like that. So we throughout this kind of collaboration, we wanted to witness those development in Mekong region countries by reflecting our accumulated experience and you know the advancement of the dig digitalization industry. Actually, those development in certain sectors should be in conjunction with, with outside of its domain, something like outside of the water box, you know. Those development in ICT sectors and those development in, in the space technology, something like US NASA. Well, uh, last, last month, last month between USAID and Minister of Environment and Korean Mekong Center, we signed a state of intent 
for the collaboration in water sector and developed a joint project, especially for the Mekong. And also with the MI, we already worked very closely by through the water data utilization for the Mekong, Mekong government officials. It has been already two, three years. And uh, three years and supported, happily supported by Korea Mekong Collaboration Fund and happily supported by United States government through the Mekong US partnership. So it was quite successful, even though they, we, uh, we, we, go, we went through the uh, COVID era, those bilateral and multilateral development based on the, those advancement of the, the outside water sector. Water is already there. But um, the, the, the other development, we very aggressively embrace those development and also existing collaboration network. So the Korea Mekong Center, we're going to continue this collaboration. And also I, today I reported those results of the first Mekong Korea International Water Forum. So this kind of platform event will be continued to the, to the next year. And also we wanted to, we wanted to receive uh, those observations and reflection of the, what would be the more, um, you know, more efficient way we can share. Uh, we can proceed our collaboration into the second level of collaboration. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Park. So, um, by reflecting your response, I think the Mekong um, Research Center, um, Mekong Korea Center, is at the core of um, center of this cooperation in the future, I guess. Uh, from Korean perspectives. And um, this different political commitments has been very much uh, strengthened um, compared to the previous years. And also uh, that could be also having synergetic effect with the different coexistent um, uh, institutes, um, collaborative activities that we already had with outside of Mekong region and also inside of Mekong region. So um, that could also be linked to what um, Mr. Brett said also, the, um, what has been um, mentioned as the case of the synergy that we're seeking for. So, um, so maybe I'm going to move to Dr. Zhang um, about this digitalization in uh, water management. So digital transformation in water management, um, it was very impressive uh, for me as well. Um, was presented as we all all aware of um, this technology transfer and the innovation are the essential enabler for the future oriented water management. Um, but many people might um, want to have your response that when we talk about this Mekong regional development in water sector, uh, there might be a little gap that we need to figure it out how to make that gap a little smaller. <laughs> and um, what do you think it's the um, priority that, um, that you could suggest for this digitalization of water management to those emerging countries? Not only for the Mekong region, but maybe a neighboring countries also could have that advices uh, from the expert of the digitalization of technology. Yeah, thank you. Actually, that's the fundamental questions. <laughs> Although the I presented about the digital transformation of water resources management in case of Korea. However, please note that it takes a lot of time and effort, and we are still developing it, and we met a lot of the unexpected problems. We cannot achieve those results at the same time. And the K water was established in 1967. We are applying those, this kind of technology after 2000, uh, 20, 2010, after 2010. Please remember it, so it takes a lot of time. In case of the Mekong River water set, then the, some, the, I would like to make some comments the, the, in three parts, based on my the knowledge and my experience. And first one is the data and the information sharing with quality control among the Mekong countries. As we all know, the, the data is the, the fundamental and most important. And uh, it actually, the, it is the first step for the water resource management in this area. And uh, the, the, those data should be collected and with the, the quality control. And without the quality control, Data is not variable, and it is very possible to design water resources management plan 
incorrectly. Whatever advantage technologies and the systems applied in a water cell. Also, the observation stations should be installed and located in appropriate places. In other words, the special distribution of the observation stations are very important to capture the geomorphologically and the meteorological characteristic in a water cell. And second one is the making a long-term plan for the sustainable water risk management in this area. Actually, the, I think the each Mekong country, they may have uh, the different purposes and priorities in the water resource management field. Sometimes they want to resolve the water-related issues all together within a very short period. For this reason, the, they may want to adapt and establish the, those the, the digital the technologies, the advanced ice based technologies, to implement IWRM in a water set. However, I believe it is not simple and the, it, it may take a lot of time, as I mentioned earlier. And the Korea also takes a lot of time to implement IWRM with the advanced ice based technologies. And for this reason, I strongly recommend to make a long-term plan and impl implement those things step by step for sustainable water management technologies. The last one is the capacity building. In the Mekong River water set, I think many countries have been supported by the advanced countries, MDBs, and the global organizations in order to resolve the water-related issues. And they have applied and installed their own advanced technologies supported by those countries. Uh, but uh, it might be okay while they, they are the adept, they're acting and working during a pr project period. However, please think about it and please, uh, uh, after the project, th those the spot from the, those the advanced countries are leaving and then what shall we do? Local staff in Mekong countries, they have to operate and manage by themselves. If we install and establish the systems and technologies, if they don't work, then it, they, they have to pay a lot. And maybe they cannot work anymore. For this reason, I strongly recommend that the, uh, the central and local government should invest for some capacity building for their staffs. That's my opinion, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much, Dr. Zhang. That was very um, essential issues that we need to uh, agree upon and also we need to execute somehow uh, with the different efforts, I think. So data collection and the, um, um, the long-term plans in not only for the policy but also the implementation plans and also the capacity building should be the the basis of um, different operation of the digitalization of water management. So it takes a lot of time and money, we know. So um, it should be based upon a long-term plan, as you said. So that's really a um, good point that we need to keep in mind whenever we talk about this development. Um, so our um, last but not least, our presenter, um, uh, I would like to um, invite uh, from BOI, right? So I, I'm sorry, I'm not used to pronounce your <laughs> name, but still, um, I will try. Uh, Miss Suida, to Tian Wong. Tanya Wong. Tanya Wong. Tanya Wong. Wong. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. So I will just um, let me um, just call you Miss Suida. Will be fine. Yes. Okay, good. So, um, such a very impressive presentation for me. Actually, um, this was a very representative case that I have never um, heard of. What we could see also the circular economy exemplary um, case um, with the water sector um, development in the in the nation states um, decision making. So that also gives benefits to social and environmental enhancement as well. So this directly closely related to the keyword that we are talking about ESG at this moment. So I can assume the 
um, they're making five years to eight years of the exemption uh, taxes. <laughs> that will um, make so many different efforts and uh, there might be some hurdles that you could experience to make this policy even enlarged. So um, could you just share or elaborate a little bit more about this experiences, how you made this policy happened in your government and also in your um, institution? Actually, um, within the BOI, it's not that hard because uh, actually I am uh, present this uh, concept to uh, the office and then they accept easily to, uh, to add up more incentive if you produce from wastewater produce uh, water from wastewater. And especially uh, that I mentioned that uh, next year we will have new direction and BCG is uh, the key dimension of BOI next year. Actually, we, we talk about uh, BCG many years, but uh, me, we may focus more on uh, high technology activities. But next year, BCG is uh, one of the key dimension of BOI. And um, in section seven that I mentioned about service and public utilities, actually they combine activity about environmental uh, activity also uh, that I am responsible in that section also. So uh, I think um, in improvement of environmental, especially uh, water, uh, I think um, the waste the waste uh, management is highly important issue that we ha we should consider. Uh, actually, BOI uh, in the activity that wastewater tre uh, waste treatment is combined solid treatment. Also, uh, we uh, next year we will um, we will we won't uh, promote uh, activity that you um, uh, to to uh, encourage investor to use waste uh, to uh, have more value into RDF, recycle, something like that, to uh, support zero waste to landfill concept. So I think um, the waste that contaminate um, in the ground and also reflect to the water is highly important that we, we, we should focus, especially in ASEAN. So um, separate uh, kind of waste is like, uh, it's not, um, success in Thailand yet, but we are doing and push it. Uh, so BOI also um, improve condition uh, for uh, to to encourage investors in doing recycling business to to easier. Uh -huh. uh, we um, get rid of obstacle that uh, such as location. Previously, uh, we we uh, limit activity in the recycle must be uh, located in uh, industrial park only. But uh, for encourage investor in RDF, we uh, allow them to uh, go outside industrial estate if uh, they don't uh, have some uh, uh, thermal process in their project. Uh, this is for example. So uh, I think BOI is uh, move forward to more BCG activity next year. So please look forward to it. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for um, sharing that very valuable um, initiative by BOI. So uh, that was really surprising that it was um, um, unexpectedly, it was very simple procedure, but I think um, the perception already was there within your own community and even in the Thailand about this, um, seeing this water management as a very center, central um, policy that we need to seek for with the not only environment, but also economy, this you know, more comprehensive way. So that's really um, nice to learn about your um, case. Um, so we have um, total 15 minutes left, but um, I couldn't even give you the, all the questions I prepared. So let's just um, limit our time for this responses. I will give you um, each of you second question in a very um, short way. So you will just um, have, we have for a second question, we total, we have 10 minutes. So let's just uh, split it up two minutes each, okay? <laughs> so. Um, for um, Mr. Brad, I was very um, impressed by this whole um, 
your approach from the USAID um, on this cooperation activities, um, your thinking and highlighting the multi-stakeholders kind of gathering um, by uh, borrowing this governance um, concept, uh, inviting civil societies at the same time. And how do you um, develop this um, the multi-stakeholders concept in your activities. Um, I thought it was really impressive. Um, also, the different cutting-edge technologies with NASA is also very impressive, but still, we are talking about the governance at this uh, seminar, uh, the part one. So I thought it was it's good to focus on the governance issue with the civil society. Do you have any particular value that you want to share with us? Yeah, I can, um, you know, the, the program in particular I was referencing uh, was Mekong for the Future, although not unique to just that activity, but uh, USAID as an agency, um, and I'm sure it's similar with many of us here, see civil society as a very important component to decision making and to getting involved in the policy and that non-governmental organizations, you know, even counting private sector or religious groups or, um, having their input and in intake on, on uh, activities and projects and policies that are affect their lives are very important and each country is different so the crux of this program is we've tried to identify uh, civil society groups within the lower Mekong countries and pull them in to connect them, uh, connect them with platforms, connect them with activities like SEVERE where they can get geospatial training and understand uh, certain things that may be affecting their communities and um, also pulling them up into, up into an area like ASEAN so that uh, uh, ASEAN members are also very clear of people on the ground and organizations on the ground that aren't just governments. Um, so it's, it's been interesting, it's been a lot of work, um, but we see civil society as a key element in everything we do basically. What I would like to echo for our cooperation in between the not only Mekong region but also outside partners that we are um, communicating with. So um, let's um, move to our second question um, to Mr. Surian. Uh, so I found this um, very interesting part uh, in your presentation about the focus areas and sectors of the framework that you've introduced um, for the most attention received and the least attention received. And I saw this um, seven different areas that Mekong Korea Cooperation Funds has been applied to. And only two of seven items has been included in the most attention received list. So um, I just want to have your personal and as an expertise um, opinion that do you want to suggest um, Korea uh, focus on more on this least item, I mean the item of the least of the most at, um, attention received in the cooperation? So um, I do not, I, I would not say that, you know. Uh, partly is um, categorizing project uh, is a challenging work by itself. Uh, Meco Institute has been also doing very um, a difficult job to label it. Of course, we, we look into where portfolio of activity will address the most, then we will try to categorize in that area. But uh, our experience uh, in uh, doing at least uh, five call, six call already uh, of Mekong Korea Corporation Fund. We also learned that the project do not really adopt a very uh, isolated single sector or single approach uh, development, you know. Of course, they address water, but they also look into other aspects, you know. That's why I, my last slide, I emphasize about co-benefit of multi-functionality, multi-purpose benefit of water. You know, why you look at dress water, you look also at any other aspect. So the project that is labeled as environment or water may not, may not be completely working only on water. The relation into how the water support livelihoods, but of course livelihoods, which is uh, 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 social inclusion or maybe human resource development is not the main part, but they are interconnection. Having said that, I think this is something I would hope 
that uh, the forum like this try also to experience, uh, to share the experience across presentation that we have heard this morning that in fact the process like this, you know, to hear is not whether how many projects working on water, how much fund has been allocated to address water issue or water management, but the process of designing platform, engaging stakeholder, applying measures like BOI, how it put into works, what are implementation issues, how we go about it, how we can create scalable, viable business model that we can replicate. These are information that would be interested in by industry, private sector. And I hope that these are the value adding of all the MacHome, MacHome Plus Corporation framework that we try to strengthen capacity, providing investment incubation concept for replication and scaling up experience, then let industry and private sector take on in scaling up the development. I hope that may be something we can, we can help to foster through our cooperation framework. Thank you, thank you so much. Yeah, that was very um, comprehensive approach once again that we need to think of whenever we um, make any plans or they execute our plans um, into the field. So um, uh, to Dr. Park, um, yeah, I was um, wondering, um, because you've mentioned in the very first part of your presentation that um, the Mekong Center, Mekong Korea Research Center, is seeking for um, the global entity, uh, uh, global leader entity uh, in this Mekong region. So um, uh, to do that, I think um, it should be a little bit uh, more inclusive um, which means that um, we are now only focusing on these lower Meccan countries and it's a little bit um, sometimes forbidden item to discuss, but um, it's already opened to everyone that um, now China is in more involved in this cooperative activities, um, what I've heard from MRC chair uh, like last month. So what do you think about this Chinese involvement in the future? Do you have any long-term plans for um, this Chinese involvement in our cooperation initiative uh, from Korea? Okay. okay, thanks for the question. Well, actually the, the basis of this Mekong Korea Center was based on the Korea Mekong Summit back to year 2019. That time, we already had a, had a project between Korea and United States that water data utilization is supported by MKCF and Mekong Korea Partnership Fund. So that, that is why we more and more like focus on the law of Mekong and also those you know, strong alignment with the United States. But um, at the moment, uh, uh, the most crucial, crucial issue of the Mekong region you know, management, the efficient water resource management is that the transparency of the data and also those conversation between Upper Mekong and Raw Mekong, and the right center of that is the multi-purpose dam development in the, in the upper region. And also, somewhat, it is very difficult to find out a trustable data. And you know, I, I like the phrases right that data as a common language for the communication, data as a common basis for the development and planning. So I think we need to pursue that aspect, the transparency and reliable data set for the efficient communication among the different stakeholders and among different you know sectors participants. Yeah well for the China at the moment we also operating the Asia Water Council which is you know led by the uh, Kwara in Korea. So the uh, Chinese representative is very active within the Asia Water Council also. So and I noticed that the Ranchang Mekong Cooperate is very actively cooperate with with Mekong River Mekong River Commission, and they provide a lot of research and also there are some activities and to improve the transparency of the of the data collection and to better understanding those flow of region mechanism of the Mekong. So I think that there will be an opportunity we can meet and we can communicate. Further, we with the you know Lanchang Mekong cooperate through the Mekong Labor Commission. I understand Mekong Labor Commission is the right center for the for the communication with with Lanchang Mekong cooperate, 
and also recently there are many activities also, also already held and uh, some other you know we can approach it to more to transparent operation of the Mekong, Mekong River as a trans transboundary river basin so uh, we are kind of we Korea and Korea we are kind of neutral you know but someone more arrive will will be recently changed you know administration and uh, all that, you know we back to United States, we have very, very strong alliance with the United States and uh, still working on the ABA practical pro project in here. Uh, but um, uh, as, a, you know, as a one of the CSO civil society organizations, we are open for the cooperation, and I can say that now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for your response. So, um, yeah, in that way, we could understand more about what we are um, planning in the future. And hopefully um, there could be more supra kind of um, national interest uh, or the tension um, collaborative uh, framework could be made out of our um, all these efforts. So um, Dr. Zhang, I, I remember that you pointed out three, um, three um, the, the, the elements um, as a priority to having the digitalization of the water management those were the data collection and the um, long-term plan, and also the capacity building. So um, this might be a also question and also suggestion from my side, maybe. Um, as you're working as an expert in the UK Water um, Research Institute, um, so I thought it was um, among those three that uh, also data collection and also the capacity building could be one of the um, kind of realistic, um, the collaboration execution that you could plan or um, operate and um, implement somehow. So do you, um, have you ever <laughs> planned or think of any um, of these different projects on this um, items uh, in the Mecca? Actually, I don't have many experience to some the applied to the some Mekong regions, mm -hmm. but I remember that I had a, the, the, the project in the, some region, but at that time I remember that you know to some the, the design and the, the evaluate and the diagnose the water set. Mm -hmm. We need the data. Data is the first thing as the Dr. Buck mentioned. Mm -hmm. But the, at that time I, I remember that I was very struggling to get the data. Also, the, even if I get uh, the, those data, then, oh, I, I, sometimes I cannot use it. Mm -hmm. So, and then the, the, I use the, some those data, the, the coupling with the, the globally available data. That's the one thing. Maybe the, nowadays, the many some, the, as I mentioned, the, the, the countries and even the global organizations like the USAID, then maybe they some the applied the project for a specific country and area, but you put all together, even Korea, even the USAID and all the, the uh, organizations, why they don't think about the, some the collaborate to get and to implement together? That's the one thing, and uh, actually the, you the mention about the which elements is important. See, <laughs> three of them are important actually. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the I the all those that I the mentioned and the recommend for the, some to the, the local and the central government in this area, actually they have to really to invest, mm. and they have to think about it. So they have to invest in water resources in field. So sometimes in Korea also though we had the experience sometimes the if I compare the, some the amount of the investment, the, the, the amount of the investment in water resources is very, very small point compared to the other some the infrastructures. Now the, I have a question to the, this, the, the local and the, the central government, how much you some the invest? Right, so the, you know to some the some the, the implement comprehensively, they need to think and some other educate and make us capacity building and 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 actually the, some the I'm not sure but the, they need some other establish some 
specific some organization in their some country or some the Mekong countries together, like K Water. That's my comment. Okay, um, thank you. Uh, that was very important point, actually. Um, sometimes, yes, we can measure how important it is um, by how much we invest <laughs> to the issue. And also, this different um, stakeholders and the level of understanding um, could be one uh, first step that we need to figure it out how to resolve in a very effective way. Um, so my last question goes to um, Ms. Suira uh, again. I was uh, very impressed by the um, this interactive online the, the, the mechanism that you're communicating with uh, potential investors. Do you have any um, suggestions or the, any comment to the potential investors? First of all, uh, if you would like to start business in Thailand, I suggest you go to uh, the OSOS Investment Center because it stands for One Start and One Stop Service Center. So you don't have to uh, connect with multiple agencies by yourself because it's very hard. <laughs> so uh, I suggest you go there and jump to the square. And, and at building, there are many office, um, government office there uh, to help you in uh, doing business in Thailand. And you can find out more detail in OSOS website. You will find out many interesting uh, stuff for your doing business in Thailand. Thank you, Ms. Weda. Um, that was really useful information. So um, by um, saying that um, having the topic of the first part of the session, um, which is water governance in the Mekong River Basin, um, we all agree that the Mekong region is now one of the core force of Asian development in every sector, not only water sector, but it interlinked and interconnected to every other sectors. So um, uh, it is also at the center of geopolitically and economically strategic partner for many of the countries or organizations in and outside of the Mekong region um, in water sector. What do you... Um, uh, think of what, how we are going to proceed our, um, all this common value that we can seek for together. So um, I really wanted to invite all this, um, the audiences on the floor, but because of the time constraint, maybe we would like to use our lunch time um, as a casual um, interaction time. So we'll just leave it um, to the, to that slot in the lunch time. So, okay, I know it's late, uh, but maybe because it's really hard to um, gather all of this um, very good expert experts at a time. So I'll just give you 20 seconds for each, okay? Just 20, 20 seconds. So just two sentences or three sentences. Any comments that you think as the priority uh, as, the, as um, seeking for our common um, collaborative vision together? Um, thanks for that. Let's. Uh, I think from my side, I'll just say let's uh, let's partner. Let's uh, let's not duplicate what uh, each other's efforts, and let's work together and share information and be transparent. We're all, I think, have the same shared goals and values for the region. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you. I think policy is clear. The issue now is translating policy into implementation. I know that uh, government policy and the bling incentive are important, but what more important is resources, knowledge, technology of the industry and private sector. I would hope that Mekong Related Corporation provide an actionable partnership platform that showcase how bis uh, a viable business model, how scalable model can be implemented. And I would like to extend invitation for the private sector industry to really look into how they can play their role in this Mekong Plus Corporation. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to, to share and promote the Mekong Korea Center in Korea. So for the collaboration toward Korea, especially in the water sector, we are acting as a platform organization we are acting as a channel to connect to the government and private sector and also CSO, CSO organization. Please remember Mekong Korea Center and there will be the, another edition of Mekong Korea International Forum in Seoul. Thank you. Thank you. So as the Dr. Fagner mentioned, actually the Mekong Center is located in K-Water. 
and also the Kevara, I'm from the Kevara Research Institute. I I co collaborated with the Mekong Center, so I know that there are there is so a lot of collaboration to, between Korea and the Mekong countries. At the same time, the based on the, my experience, maybe we are actually ready to share the, our knowledge and the, actually the some the the problems issues to be resolved and. The, First, uh, most important thing is that I would like to say is the go together. That's my comment, my last comment. Okay. Um, I think we live in the same world, so we should have help each other as best as we can. And um, BOI Thailand always welcome you. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was very simple and very impressive um, points that we should remember for um, from our discussion. So hopefully we could um, make this opportunity of gathering to continue our um, cooperation and also the discussion which way will be the better way that we should cooperate each other. So thank you very much once again and I also want to appreciate all the organizers of this uh, special event. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you again to our presenters for sharing your valuable insights.